was written for our exam, for our understanding. And what happened before happened for our example. Jesus said unto those who were gathered at Capernaum, Sister Remy, but there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him. And he said, Therefore said I unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my Father. And I want to closely from verse 66. From that time, many of his disciples went back. From that time, many of his disciples went back and they walked no more with him. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will he also go away? Then Simon Peter, the same Simon Peter, well, no, Simon Peter. Simon Peter answered him and said, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. And we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ, the Son of the living God. The question is today, do you believe? Dear Lord, we come to you this morning and we are awaiting a message. For sometimes, Lord, we are in doubt. Sometimes our thoughts are troubled. But on this holy day, we see a message of reassurance from you. But he whom you have chosen is unable, is unworthy, and to be honest sometimes, is unwilling. But if you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. So forgive chambers and hide me behind you. May I not be a stumbling block to what you want your people to hear today. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Reddy, for your lovely introduction. Jesus, the day before, was preaching by the wayside. And Sister White and his of ages recorded that this is the day that Jesus spoke his first, his first, his first parable. The parable of the sower and the seed, the parable of the, of the, of the talent, the parable of the wheat and the tear.
Jesus worked a miracle that day with just two fishes and five loaves. And at the end of the miracle, five men were fed and their women and children. And at the end of the eating, twelve baskets of fragments were collected. I serve a miracle working God. What about you? That is why, brothers and sisters, I am not here to tell you that things are going to be good. But I am here to tell you that when things are bad, God is in control and God can make something out of nothing. What does the church say? I say amen. But after that wonderful miracle, the people wanted to crown Jesus King of the Jews. Believing that he with his power would overthrow the Roman authority and reinstate the Jews as God's chosen people and a force to reckon with on earth, what Jesus would have none of it. Because Jesus came not to set up an earthly kingdom, but an heavenly kingdom and also a kingdom of grace. So Jesus asks his disciples to. Sailing across the lake over into Capernaum. And it was morning that we picked up on the mess, on the scriptures that I have just said. It was morning. Those who were fed came back by the seashore to see if they could find Jesus, but Jesus was not there. Neither were his disciples there. And they learned that Jesus went across. And so they went. I want to read the, 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 the beginning of the, of the chapter, chapter 6 of John. When they found Jesus, their question was, Jesus, how did you get over here? But I love Jesus. And I strive to be like Jesus. Because when all around us is filled with hypocrisy, hypocrisy at work, hypocrisy at school, hypocrisy in our communities, and hypocrisy in church. Jesus always cut right to the chase. And I wonder what Jesus was talking about. Jesus never talked behind people's back. Jesus looked straight in their eyes and Jesus' response was, you are not seeking me because you love me. You are not seeking me because I desire me. You are not seeking me because I want to be drawn closer. You are seeking me for food. The same food that you got yesterday. And so the topic of the message this morning is, do you believe? We are still talking about the church. And so Jesus started to counsel them. Jesus told him that the bread that you get yesterday will perish. But seek ye for the bread of eternal life that I only can give you. And when you receive me, my flesh and my blood, talking about the salvation that Jesus is going to offer, then you will have bread that leads to eternal life. And you will never own. They did not want to hear that. Because like us today, we see the things that are temporal, the things that we can see. But Paul is often reminding us that seek not, or Jesus is reminding us, seek not the things that are, are that you can see, because the things that you can see are temporal. But seek the things that you can see, because the things that you can see are eternal. It is time for us to believe. And to see Jesus not only for fish and bread, but to see Jesus for salvation. And so they start to ask the question, isn't this Joseph's son? Why is he telling us to eat of his flesh? This is a hard saying. And so they started to depart one by one. How oh, many I said were fed the day before? 5,000 men not to eat and not to count women and children. And they started to leave Jesus one by one, two by two, until at the end of the Exodus, the only folks who remained were Jesus. 
Jesus said, disciples are apostles, and Jesus asked this profound question, will he also go away? Don't pray ourselves because this is not right wrong. As we know. And I have nothing to be proud of because Barnes and I have to come down here and speak. It's not Barnes. When the Seventh-day Adventist Church in 2022, it's not the Seventh-day Adventist ch Church that God desires. But yet we are comfortable. We are at ease in Zion. When our churches are almost empty. This is not what God desires or requires of us. And so God is asking your question. So many have left. COVID was just a shaking, brothers and sisters. And there are more shakings to come. But why not prepare for worse shaking and more pestilences? and more famines, and more disasters, and more virus, and bacteria. God is asking us the question, will you go also? Will you go also? That's why I love Peter, because Peter reminds me so much of myself. I fail ever so often, but thank God for his grace that always reminds me that a saint is not someone who automatically gets perfect, but a saint is one who falls and gets up. That is Peter. That is why Peter, Peter was at its, its peak when he responded to Jesus' question, Lord, where shall we go? To whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal I searched for the scripture this morning and I could not find it. But I said, I must find it because this scripture is describing the church today. I don't know about you, but I ever so often wonder without the church. Without the church, young people, meaning what will become of the church? I don't know about you, but if, not, if, you're, if, if, if you are not burdened and anxious and troubled by the situation in God's church today, I, I am here to tell you from the authority of the Bible that something is wrong with you. I'm not burdened, Sister Bella, about whether I'm going I'm 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 to get a meal tonight. I'm, I'm not burdened whether I'm going to have guests to, to, to take me to work Monday morning. I'm not burdened where I'm going to get the next, the next suit from. I'm not burdened with the insecurity of the fact that I may not be paid month end. I'm burdened because, brothers and sisters, sometimes in my mind it seems as if God's church is failing. I may not be great as a sinner. Something is not wrong with me. I'm speaking based on what I am seeing, brothers and sisters. When I see the, the struggle still in God's church, even though we are so few in numbers, I'm still fighting for power. Even though there are more, more seats and benches than people, there is still simplicity and pettiness. Even though, brothers and sisters, half of the church has gone, there is still so much pride and ego. And if I was poor, hungry, ready, I would have lost that power since COVID because there is hardly anybody to lead it over. But people are still grabbing on the power and authority. I'm troubled for, for my church because I can't find my own people. I'm troubled for my church, brothers and sisters, because when people like Elder McDowell die, you know, brothers and sisters, that the patriarchs are going and there is no level of leadership to take over. We trouble with what I go to. I'm troubled because I'm not seeing Elder Max replacement. I'm troubled because I'm not seeing Elder Hines replacement. I'm troubled because I'm not seeing Pastor Miller's replacement. I'm 
God's called all people. And that is why 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9 tells us that we are, we are a chosen generation. We are a royal priesthood. We are a holy nation. We are a peculiar people. Therefore, we must bring forth or shine the light that God has put on us. We are an ordinary people. And God's people must stop behaving ordinary. God's people must stop behaving normal because we are special, we are peculiar, we are different. Little Williams, we are strange, we are funny to the world, but it's better for me to be funny to the world and to be right in the sight of God than for me to be, to be, to be a friend of the world. And this pleases God. So God's church can feel so they can no worry, no fret by your bed and sleep because God's church is his call of people. God's church cannot fail because God's church is the body of Christ. That is why when, 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 when Paul was counseling husbands and, and wives, he said to the wives, wives, submit yourselves to the husband. But he said something more important to the husband. He said, husband, love your wives even as Christ loved the church and gave his life for it. Christ Church is his body, but not only is Christ church his body, but Christ is the head. Yeah. So turn around, excuse me, quickly, quickly with me to, to Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. Because many times we talk about Christ being the body, the church being the body of Christ. But, but, but we must also recognize that our body must have a head. And the head of the church, brothers and sisters, is not me. The head of the church is not the president. The head of the church is not the pastor or the elder. Verse 22 of Ephesians chapter 1. And has put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all. Amen. God has put Christ to be the head of his church. The church cannot fail because the church is the body of Christ. And Paul counsels us in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 that the church is a body and in the same way as our, our mortal body, every member has different functions, so is the church. The church is the body of Christ and every member makes up this body and every member has his or her own role to play according to the gifts that the Holy Spirit has bestowed upon you. In other words, I'm saying, the church now no garment people. If you have been called upon the service of the Lord, if you are converted, the Holy Spirit will bless you with at least one gift. And the Holy Spirit and God expected to use that gift according to Ephesians chapter 4 for the work of the education of the saints, for the work of the ministry, and for the perfecting of the saints until all have come into the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. Unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Jesus Christ. Amen. So assess yourself. What are you doing in God's church? Because God's church do not have dormant members. Everybody must have a role. Let me tell you what the Paramount Adventist Church today. Everybody thinks that they can do somebody else's job. Everybody overlooking what they have been blessed to do and want to do what somebody else was blessed to do. She must want what Williams to do. And Williams want to do what she must to do. And so we end up with pure confusion and our young people see this and they are leaving the church. Church is not a one-man shop. That's why I tell, I, I tell I tell, whenever I'm planning a program, I tell my church, I don't want to see one somebody talking. Because you are not know, blessed to give that talking. Everybody has something to do. I remember when I was growing up elder, and I see, I see, I see one elder takes out of school, one elder teaches lesson, one elder, one elder to ten minutes, one elder preach. 
serve as his own. Let them do what they have been blessed to do and you do what you have been blessed to do because the church is the body of Christ and the same as of the hand cannot do what the feet do and the feet cannot do what the eyes do and the eyes cannot do what the ears do. Everybody must pray for the Lord to show you what you have been blessed to do and do it. Don't envy another man's gift.
bigger than Barclays, bigger than Lebron, and if it is so big, how can it fail? This is not Ukraine. This is not Iraq. This is not Afghanistan. This is God's church, and God's church cannot fail because God's church is universal. God's church cannot fail because God's church has a mission. Matthew chapter 28 ends by telling us, telling us that we must go in therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And no, I am with you always. God's church cannot fail. But we have a mission, and Jesus is with us to accomplish this mission. Before I close, brothers and sisters, I must remember that God's church cannot fail because God's church got its structure and organization from his scriptures. And of Joseph Bates and Ed White and James White dream one dream last night and put God's church together. God's church is in prophecy and God's church was organized and structured from scripture. That is why, brothers and sisters, we are no one man church. We are no pastor church. And pastor, pastor church, and to the dead, and to the dead, and to the This is not God's church. God's church is a democratic church. That is why we pass the button on from Elder Williams to Elder Bay, because God's church is democratic. God's church has its organization based in scriptures. Remember, brothers and sisters, when the apostles in Acts chapter 6 complained that they have to be, they have, they have, they have to be serving till. They have to be caught up too much in welfare. They have to be caught up too much in visitation and helping people to, to push and sharing food and providing food. And it is taken away from their time of preaching the message. Remember what the solution was? Choose from among you seven men, seven deacons who are what? Pure and who are filled with the Holy Spirit. That is what we practice today, brothers and sisters. Election of officers based on scriptures. God's church has the job description for every officer rooted in the Bible. First Timothy. First Timothy chapter 3. First Timothy chapter 3. A bishop, a elder, a deacon must be one who is pure, one who is honest, one who has integrity, one who has one life, one who can rule his own household. That's where we get our job description from, brothers and sisters. But search cannot fail because God's church has been from the beginning. From the beginning, from God created Adam and Eve, God created a church. And so when we study church heritage in master guides, we learned that there are nine dispensations of the church or nine church periods. And Sister Rene, we learned that there was the church of the Old Testament starting from Adam and Eve. And then we heard that after that there was a church of the New Testament and as a church that Jesus formed and left on earth. And then we heard that there is also the Apostolic Church as a church that Jesus left with his apostles to lead. That's the church that was, was built on mission and spreading the message all over the olden world. And then we heard about the church of the dark ages. That pure church that Jesus left was infiltrated by error and paganism and, and, and was transformed into the papal church. A church that was led by the devil. But when the papacy was reigning, brothers and sisters, thank God that he has never left himself without a witness. There was always a set of people who chose to be true and righteous and faithful to Jesus Christ, even though they were oppressed for 1,260 years. And after the dark ages, there came.
in the Church of the Reformation, Martin Luther, Wycliffe, Calvin, the Waldenses, the church that protested against the Roman Catholic Church. There came the church of Martin Luther, who protested against the Catholic, who nailed on the, on the front door of the Catholic Church in Wittenberg this 95 thesis about where the Catholic Church is wrong and was excommunicated from the church, the church of the Reformation. And then there came the church of the pilgrims. When the Europeans were persecuted for righteousness sake by, 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 by the papacy, they, they, they ran over into the New World America. 100 persons boarded the Mayflower and went over into, into America to, 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 to worship freely. And that is why America is called the land of what? The land of liberty, the land of the brave and the free. And then they run to the church of the missionaries, where missionaries were sent from America all over the world, Africa and Asia, to bring the good news of salvation. And then they come down to the church of the Adventists, the church that was led by the Millerites who preached about the second coming of Jesus Christ in 1844. But are disappointed and out of the Middle Rights came the Remnant Church, the Seventh Adventist Church that we know it today. And I stopped right here because then that day is going to pick up later with the Remnant Church in that class. And so brothers and sisters, I hasten to tell you as I do, though Bentley is worried at times, Though make this burden, though you may be troubled, brothers and sisters, recognize that God's church cannot fail. Sometimes our humanity presses on us, and all we can see is the rebellion. All we can see is the exodus from the remnant. All we can see is ap apostasy. All we can see is apathy. Young people have no appetite for Jesus again. And sometimes it causes us to be distressed. For God's church can have faith. Recognize, brothers and sisters, that this church militant will be the church that shall rise triumphant. And soon and very soon, brothers and sisters, there will be no more burn for God's church. There will be no more breathe for God's church. There will be no more wondering if God's church will fail. There will be no more question without the church. There will be no more question what do you believe because this church that seem as if it is destined for failure shall rise triumphantly. And so I encourage you to be faithful. Be faithful, young people. Stay in the church. Hold your seats. You must see nothing yet. Worse than Corona is to come. Worse than monkeypox is to come. Worse than the pettiness and the hypocrisy that we are seeing now is to come. As a matter of fact, in great controversy, Sister White tells us that, 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 that our brightest light will become our most bitter persecutor. Worse is to come. So the watch of Guana Boys content and the watch of Guana Abushi and the watch of Guana Highgate sent me here. Enough, follow nobody, follow Jesus Christ. Hold on to your seat, brothers and sisters, and don't be shaken out because worse shaking is to come. And if God's people are not careful, really, we are going to be shaken out, and the man that is passing with the gun just split in his mouth and the rope buckle in his hand will be brought in. Hold on to your seat. And so I close, I remind you, brother, you are take a grip, my brother. Take a grip, my sister. Take a grip. Hold a grip. Hold fast. And never let go. No matter what we preach, no matter what we say, and no matter what we wear, brothers and sisters, I know that I am worshiping in God's true church. I may fail, but I still God's true church. I may be miserable, but I still God's true church. I may talk to Bradley, but I still God's true church. And I'm not going nowhere. No man, no boy, no one shall take my seat. I shall hold on by the grace of God. I shall hold on to Jesus until he comes. For this church, militant, will become soon a church triumphant. And we shall see triumphant. Sure.
because Jesus is coming to take his church home. I'm going to be a part of that number by the grace of God. May that be your desire. May that be your commitment. May you hold on to that pledge with every fiber in your body, with every red blood cell in your blood, with every consciousness in your mind. Hold on to Jesus Christ. Stay in your church. When Jesus is coming soon, the day was soon. May the Lord bless us. May the Lord keep us. May the Lord let his face shine upon us. Give us peace in our turmoil. Give us peace in our anxiety. Keep us steadfast until he comes. God bless you.